This is the most immersive gaming monitor that I have ever used. This 45 inch 240Hz OLED LG Ultra Gear monitor is truly a game changer. With a plethora of fantastic features tailored for gamers, let's dive into my review after 3 months of using this monitor on a daily basis for both work and gaming. At the time of its release, this monitor was marked as the world's first 240Hz OLED gaming monitor, which once again shows how LG is pioneering and pushing the boundaries to create ever improving gaming experiences for consumers like you and I. The inclusion of OLED on a gaming monitor, especially when paired up with rapid refresh rates and low response times, really starts blurring the lines between immersive modern TVs and gaming monitors. As we know in 2023 it's not uncommon for people to have huge OLED TVs with a 120Hz 4K display, but until recently these combined specs were unheard of in the gaming monitor markets. With that said, at just under 45 inches, this 800R our curved display could definitely be mistaken for a TV with its sheer size. As for standout specs, this monitor runs at a WQHD or wide quad high definition resolution of 3440x1440p as well as having a peak brightness of 1000 nits and a refresh rate of 0.03 milliseconds grey to grey. Now I know what you might be thinking, 1440p on a monitor of that size surely has a pretty poor pixel density and yes you would be right. However, I want you to stick with me here and let me show you and explain why this is not as big of an issue as you think it may be. This monitor was built from the ground up for gaming, and games on this monitor simply look fantastic. But my main point here is that if this was a 4K 240Hz monitor, you're going to need an absolutely insane system to run anything to take advantage of this monitor's specs. I have a what I would call modest high-end build with a 3080 and i9 9900K, and there's no chance on earth I'm running anything at 4k 240hz. So in that respect 1440p is the sweet spot to ensure that you get the best experience possible from both the game and monitor. If I had to make any changes to this monitor I would have opted for a 38 inch screen instead of the 45 which would help to increase that pixel density but then I wouldn't have such an insanely cool and somewhat overwhelming monitor sat on my desk. As for the monitor itself it has a beautiful near borderless design with two HDMI 2.1 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4, as well as both USB upstream and downstream 3.0 ports, a headphone jack and an optical out. It's also worth noting that this monitor is Visa mountable, but unfortunately does not have any built-in speakers, so please do keep that in mind. Internally, this monitor natively supports both G-Sync and FreeSync, as well as featuring HDR10, having a contrast ratio of 1.5 million to 1, and of course the other specs that I've already covered. However, one feature I did want to revisit was the peak brightness of 1000 nits. OLED is beautiful, the true blacks and incredibly high contrast make for a very immersive experience, however it can often lack in brightness levels. LG have come up with a pretty genius solution to this and they call it their Micro Lens Array or MLA. It's quite a complicated concept but they essentially have a layer of convex lenses in front of the OLED pixels which prevent reflection and therefore loss of light. This has led to an incredible 60% higher luminance and 30% wider viewing angles than on the previous generation of OLED displays. As well as this, they've also implemented their Meta technology, which is an algorithm that analyzes what's on screen and makes adjustments to ensure you're hitting peak brightness where it's needed. Thanks to the combination of OLED, MLA and Meta technology, this monitor produces some incredible visuals without hindering the performance. And what this means altogether is a vibrant, bright and clear image. Lastly, about the physical monitor itself, it also features an anti-glare coating, which I have to say is much needed on curved monitor and it works fantastically well. And trust me, I know all of this marketing jargon can be quite heavy, but I really think it's important to understand exactly what the technology is that we're investing our money into, because these things aren't cheap, coming in at $1,600 or £1,500. As I said earlier, this monitor is built for gamers, and what I mean by that is the features and extras have been implemented specifically for gaming. For example, the four-pole headphone jack supports incoming and outgoing sound, an FPS counter is available on screen, as well as black stabilizer settings, a crosshair, and by far my favorite feature, the picture in picture and picture by picture modes, which can quickly be controlled with the included remote. These PIP and PBP settings are fantastic for those who want to multitask and essentially use their monitor as a dual monitor setup. I find myself using it most to have the Xbox on one side or something like Discord or Spotify on the other. It's worth noting though that each side in the PBP mode is allocated just 120 Hertz, but of course that is the maximum an Xbox Series 
Series X can output anyway, so there are no issues there whatsoever. I haven't really mentioned about the design of the monitor yet, but I absolutely adore its near borderless display, and I think the curve is brilliant. The included stand is strong and sturdy, and you can easily adjust the height and tilt as necessary. Not only that, but this monitor features various lighting zones which can easily be controlled and customised with the remote. You've got two lighting zones on the back of the monitor and one in the centre underneath that you can easily adjust to match your gaming setup's aesthetic. So now I'm going to delve into my thoughts and opinions about the LG Ultra Gear 45 GR 95 QE. I've now been using this monitor for three months and in that time I've grown to absolutely love using it, but it wasn't all plain sailing. Out of the box it took me a little while to find optimal visual settings for my preferences, but then again I've always been quite fussy when it comes to new monitor configurations. However, the thing that hit me the most when I first started using the monitor was the pretty low amount of pixels per inch, which led to text looking a bit off, and I suppose some initial concerns started creeping in about the monitor. Bearing in mind I was previously using a 27 inch monitor also with a 1440p resolution, so seeing that stretched out onto a screen nearly double its size was understandably something I had to get used to. As I mentioned earlier in the video though, I can understand why this choice was made, but I do think a 38 inch screen size would have been a better choice. However, as soon as I launched the first game, and I am being 100% genuine about this, I completely forgot about any concerns that I previously had. My mind was blown. The experience I was having was unlike anything I'd experienced before, and I can only liken it to a racing sim kind of feel, but for literally any game that you want. I played Cyberpunk, Red Dead 2, Starfield, Witcher 3, Sea of Thieves, Forza Motorsport, and I was absolutely in awe at the immersion that I was experiencing. It made my old 27 inch monitor feel obsolete in comparison, and I would have an incredibly tough time going back. Having the benefits of an OLED display whilst also having 240Hz and a 0.03ms response time felt like the love child of the best TVs and monitors on the market. It's a combination you really have to experience in real life to believe. The fact it's also G-Sync and FreeSync Premium compatible also makes it a great choice for all PC gamers no matter which side of the fence you're sat on. The brightness, contrast and vibrancy was great, but I do wonder how much this was hindered by the anti-glare screen coating, and as a lot of other reviewers have mentioned, they don't believe this should be on premium gaming monitors. It took me a while to get used to the monitor size, but for both work and gaming I absolutely adore this monitor. Being an ultra wide, it gives you excellent screen real estate for work and video editing for example, and the monitor's curve adds so much immersion to gaming. The 21 by 9 aspect ratio in my opinion is the perfect ratio for gaming. Most games these days also support ultra wide which is great, and you can easily see the whole screen from where you're sat whilst being fully immersed. By no means is it the perfect monitor, such a thing simply doesn't exist, well at least not yet, but overall this is one of if not the most immersive gaming monitors on the market. And if you're buying this purely for gaming and watching movies then you absolutely will not be disappointed. However with such a heavy focus on gaming some other aspects of the monitor have naturally taken a backseat, in which case for a more well-rounded choice with similarities you could look at something like the 42 inch LG C2 OLED instead. For the price point this one is really aimed at gaming enthusiasts, but it will massively level up your gaming immersion and enjoyment if you're currently using a standard monitor like I was. But the all important question is, would I recommend it? And my answer is yes, as long as gaming is your primary use because that's where the bulk of the features are focused. Although the price is very high, this monitor gives you a top tier gaming experience, so it's up to you to decide what that's worth to you. Thank you all so much for watching this video, if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks again and I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye.